I'm happy to welcome back Brian Reynolds from the Butterflies of the World Foundation. Today we're going to look at some of the differences between butterflies and moths. But these two groups of insects are actually quite closely related. Yes, mm -hmm. they, they both belong to the insect order Lepidoptera, mm -hmm. which in Greek literally means scaled winged. And okay. And if we look at the wings, that's what gives them the color, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. If you look close at these, uh, all these different colors are made up of different little scales on the wings, which are actually modified hairs. Right. And if you look at this species here, uh, it has a clear wing to it, which is normal for that species. And it's just like a fly or a dragonfly with a clear wing, and then most other but butterflies have those colored scales all over that. Okay, but, and this is where we get into one of the differences between butterflies and moth, the, the coloration. Yes. And that's probably a generality that yes, butterflies kind of, are colorful. Yes, for the most part, it's, it's kind of a gray area, but most moths are drab. Uh, you see them around your porch light at night, and they're kind of brown and mm -hmm. drab looking, and most butterflies are very colorful and beautiful. Okay. Um, getting back to some of the similarities, their body structure is quite the same. Yes, right? mm -hmm. they're insects, so they have three main body segments. You have the head, thorax, and abdomen. Mm -hmm. The thorax is the, the part of the body that contains the muscles which control the wings, and each of them have two pairs of wings, mm -hmm. and they also have three pairs of legs. Okay, and we can see those on this upside down specimen. Um, they also, uh, the adults that actively feed have a, a long mouth part, kind of like a straw, Yes. called a proboscis. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's for display purposes, they have that uncoiled. But usually, when the butterfly is not using it, it's curled up underneath the head, kind of like a watch spring. Okay. Um, now, do all adults feed on nectar? This is used to sip nectar out of the flowers. Mm -hmm. Most butterflies feed uh, on something, uh, mm -hmm. usually nectar, but sometimes other substances like rotting fruit or sometimes mm -hmm. on other things like carrion or uh, scat, stuff like that. But mm -hmm. not all moths feed. Okay. And some of them are actually, uh, the caterpillars do all of the eating and okay. get very big and robust and build up those body reserves. And then when they metamorphosize into the adult, sometimes some species, they don't eat at all. Okay, and is that one of the reasons that the moths tend to have bulkier bodies? Yes, that's one of the reasons. Okay, yes. if we look at the two, the butterflies are a bit more slender in Sleek. their body form. So the coloration on the butterflies being brightly colored also relates back to some of their behavior. They're active yes. during the daytime. That's true. Butterflies mm -hmm. are diurnal creatures, mm -hmm. most of them, and therefore a lot of their behavior is oriented with the color. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the mates, like males when they're searching for females, they'll dart out after things that are a similar color as mm -hmm. a female. So if you're wearing a shirt that's the same color as a female butterfly, sometimes you'll have male butterflies interested in you. Or if a yellow oh, butterfly yeah. is looking mm -hmm. for a mate, you'll see it stop at all the yellow flowers or a yellow leaf or something just to see if that's a if mate. That's a mate. Mm -hmm. Now, the, um, sorry, the moths tend to be active at night. They're mm -hmm. drabber in their colors. And they use a lot of chemicals. Yeah, they have chemical to find scents. another way to find their mates. Exactly, mm -hmm. and that's why a lot of the male moths you see have very large feathery antenna mm -hmm. because they're trying to pick up all those chemicals through the air. And the more feathery the antenna is, the more surface area it has. So right. it can pick up you know, very minute quantities of that scent of the female and then backtrack that scent to the female upwards of sometimes they say 10 miles away. They That's can find That's pretty incredible. Yeah. If we contrast that back to the butterflies, they have these uh, slender antennae with a little knob yes. at the end. Yes, yep, and that's one way to tell the difference. Sometimes you have some butterflies that look moth-like mm -hmm. and some moths that look butterfly-like, but you can look at the antennae and tell that no, that, that other species is actually a butterfly because it's got strain antennae with clubs on the end of it okay. and vice versa. Yeah, it's a, one of the relatively reliable uh, traits that distinguishes the two. Yes. Um, some other differences between them behaviorally is how they rest uh, when they land. Typically right? butterflies, mm -hmm. if they're not basking, and when they bask, some butterflies will open their wings and orient themselves to the sun to get warm. They're trying to warm up. Right. right. But mm -hmm. when they're resting, like at night, when they're actually going to sleep, they rest with their wings closed. Okay. Moths, on the other hand, rest with their wings open mm -hmm. or sometimes open and tented over the body. Brian, another similarity between butterflies and moths is that they 
have a complete metamorphosis life cycle, right? Four stages. Yes, mm -hmm. and the four stages are the egg, mm -hmm. the caterpillar, the pupa, and then the adult. Now the difference uh, between butterflies and moths is especially in the pupal stage. Mm -hmm. When a moth pupates, it's called a cocoon, mm -hmm. and when a butterfly pupates, it's called a chrysalis. And the chrysalis, oftentimes we see it hanging yes. under a, a branch or a leaf, yes. something like that. Unprotected mm -hmm. for the most part, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, moths, on the other hand, will use substrate around them, like the, the de detrius on the ground and mm -hmm. leaf litter and so on, and, and entwine that in with a bunch of silk and make a, a nice thick cocoon. Cocoon to protect themselves. Yes. Well, it's a rather cloudy, rainy day, but we did see some butterflies, just not adults, right? That, that's right. <laughs> Even on a rainy day, you can go out through your garden and find caterpillars mm -hmm. all over your plants. Tell us about the, the caterpillars we saw. Mm -hmm. Well, we saw the variegated fritillary on passion vine, mm -hmm. and that's one plant I always recommend to gardeners. There's two butterflies in Oklahoma that love passion vine, mm -hmm. and that is the variegated fritillary and the gulf fritillary. So if you see the, as they call it, the little orange worm <laughs> with black spikes on it, don't kill it. That's a butterfly. Right. And the other one we saw was a painted lady. Yes, painted lady. Now it eats a lot of different plants. Uh, one of them are thistles, believe it or not, and there's some other ones that may be garden plants. So we saw one. Mm -hmm. And something that's a little bit different about the painted lady is what it likes to do is uh, kind of pull together leaves and make a little tent out of that then they hang out inside there and eat the leaves and also the frass, the droppings, will accumulate. Mm -hmm. And that's one way you can find the caterpillar yeah. is to look for the, the leaf damage with the little tent and then the frass. Mm -hmm. And then you know you have a caterpillar there and it's not like another critter eating your plant. Right. And that's common for any uh, larvae. Oftentimes they're cryptic, they blend yes. in. But if you use that either chewed leaves or the frass, you can cue in on those pretty exactly. well. We have some uh, adults that we collected earlier. Um, yes. The American snout was one we looked at. Yes, that's an unusual one. Mm -hmm. Tell yeah. us a bit about that butterfly. Well, it's some years it's very, very common. It goes in cycles, and some years there's little, literally millions of them out flying. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of an unusual butterfly. Its other relations are found in the old world, oh. and we have one representative of the, of the group here. And it has very long palpi, it makes it look like like it's Pinocchio, basically, with a really long nose, and that's why they call that a snout. Okay. Another one we have is the Phaon. Yes, the Phaon crescent. Crescent. Mm -hmm. And it's just like real small, a little larger than thumbnail sized, and it eat, eats frog fruit as a mm -hmm. caterpillar, and it's very similar to the pearl crescent. Okay. We saw that one last month. Mm -hmm. And then we also saw the common checkered skipper. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, another butterfly, and it likes waste places, vacant lots, mm -hmm. uh, anywhere there, there's flowers, you can see that. Okay. Um, what are some other butterflies that are newly active uh, coming out this month? Some of the new ones so far this year that I've seen are the morning cloak, mm -hmm. which is a stunningly beautiful butterfly. It's beautiful. Another mm -hmm. one is uh, the question mark. We mentioned those earlier in the year, but those were the ones that overwintered. Mm -hmm. Now we have a new brood, and they look a little different than the overwintering brood. Okay. And it's called seasonal polyphenism. Mm -hmm. So the new brood is out, and they're also beautiful. Another group is the Hackberry uh, Emperors, and then its close cousin, the Tawny Emperor. And then now, just now, uh, we're starting to get the, the Satyrium hair streaks, as they call it. And there are two uh, common ones in Oklahoma called the Banded Hair Streak and the Oak Hair Streak. They're thumbnail sized. There's only one brood, and they're just now starting, and they might last maybe three weeks, maybe maximum a month and then that'll be it for the year, until next year. Well, I'm glad that you come up regularly so we can catch some of those, uh, some of that seasonal activity before it's gone. Thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you.